Good morning everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Gavin and we are starting today's vlog off on a bit of a crispy Utah morning. It is currently about 25 degrees outside. I got the M3 warming up so we can talk about some E36 stuff today. While that thing is warming up, check this thing out. This is the next mod that we're gonna be doing to the E36. I'm not gonna reveal too much about it until we put it on the car, but some of you may already know what it is or be able to guess what it is. There's your little hint right there. If you think you know what it is, put it in the comments below. Now, if you are a new subscriber, you would know this, but there's usually an M235i parked right here. Today, there just so happens to be a 328i with an M3 conversion on the body. And this belongs to the same person that owns the M235. This is just his daily driver. That's Cade, by the way. If you think he should start a YouTube channel, give the video a thumbs up because I think he should. So the fact that we have two E36s in the garage today it makes me feel like today would be a good day to talk about common questions I get about the E36s on the channel. Now, one of those big questions is, are the E36s reliable? Ooh, but actually, before we get into that, I haven't been here for a little over a week and I wanna check this thing out. Man. Every time that I see this thing, especially if it's been a while, I just gotta stop and take a look and appreciate it. Jeez. And let's give you a little deeper of a look into this 328. It's got like this kind of matte brown wrap on it. He just put these wheels on here too. They look pretty good. And this one's a four door, mine being a coupe. Pretty sweet daily driver if you ask me. All right, now that that's had some time to warm up, and I figure most people who are asking that question are people who are watching the videos because they're looking into getting an E36, but aren't sure if they want one yet. So let's address that. So with the question with reliability, something that I found out with working with BMWs, whether it's E36s or E92s or anything, is that BMWs are quirky vehicles. Now what I mean by quirky vehicles is they all have a handful of problems that seem to go wrong, and if you own the car for more than a couple years, you're most likely gonna have to replace all of them. But other than those things, they're really solid vehicles. You can drive them super hard, and the motors are gonna last forever as long as you take care of them. So what are those few common problems? I'm not gonna mention every single one that you may have heard of, but as far as the big ones go, they are the need to rebuild the Vanos, the need to replace things in your cooling system, and problematic leaky power steering lines. You can see that line down there, but it's not leaking right now. Luckily, in the case of the E36, none of those things are very expensive, and it just so happens that I have had to replace all of those things on this E36. Now that may sound a little deceiving, like it's given me a ton of problems, but the reality is two of those three things were already problems that the car had before I bought it. So I actually bought this car out of Michigan. It only had 71,500 miles when I bought it. Now the person that owned this car before only drove it about 4,000 miles in the last five years, as I found out on the Carfax, which means they just were not in the car very often. Now that's a good thing if you're looking to buy a car with low miles, but where the bad things come with that. So when you don't drive a car that much, the problems that it has don't really present themselves as well. And so you don't really find a lot of the problems until you really start driving it like I do. Now I really don't drive it a ton actually. In the last year of ownership, I've only driven it about four or 5,000 miles. This isn't my daily driver, it's just my weekend car. This is my daily driver right here. So anyways, I bought this car out of Michigan, like I mentioned. So I had a pre-purchase inspection done by a shop that specialized in German cars, specifically BMWs. And when that pre-purchase inspection was finished, the guy gave me a call and told me a few things that were wrong that already that he would recommend get replaced. Now I use these things as a little bit of a bargain to be able to get the car for a cheaper cost. So I don't count these things that I'm gonna mention as things out of my pocket. What they were, were yes, the leaky power steering lines, those need to get replaced, and a leaky water pump. So I knew that the power steering system needed a refresh and so did the cooling system. Now what happens with the power steering lines is where they couple together, the rubber and the metal where they meet doesn't really create too solid of a bond and over time they start leaking a little bit. In my case, I was pulling a drift, hit full lock on the steering wheel and busted the line completely apart, spilled all my power steering fluid on the floor. Now at the time that that happened, I actually had a refresh kit for the power steering ready to be put on the car and an appointment set with the shop 
I just was waiting for, for my appointment to happen, basically. And at the same time that I had the power steering stuff taken care of, I had the water pump replaced. So with those two things taken care of, that should have been taken care of by the previous owner, let's talk about my first year of ownership and what's gone wrong in that time, as well as how much it cost. Whenever I drive this thing, I pretty much drive it like I'm either on a racetrack or a skid pad. So with that being said, this thing has been pretty dang rock solid and really hasn't given me many problems, at least ones that are big problems at all. But I have had a few things go wrong. The first thing that I had to take care of were the motor mounts. Those were probably the ones that came with the car when I bought it, being 19 years old, and were really soft and rubbery. It was making it harder to shift, the motor was moving around a lot, so I picked up some Vorschlag polyurethane motor mounts. There's one down there, and there's another one down here. And those cost me about a hundred bucks. The next thing that went wrong had to do with the need to rebuild my Vanos. Big surprise, huh? It's one of the common ones. So I, start to hear, I started to hear it rattle and I had that replaced, cost me about 150 bucks. So now we're in the repairs, $250. The third thing that went wrong was honestly a surprise because I just had had it taken care of and that was my water pump started to leak again. That could have been because of a multitude of things it wasn't an OEM one that was put back in. It probably just wasn't that great of quality. So I went ahead and bought a better one and put that in. Now, if you're going to get your water pump replaced, it could cost you anywhere between 50 to 200 bucks, depending on if you just buy a cheap one or if you buy the top of the line, high performance racing water pump. I bought one that was kind of in between at about 75 bucks and hasn't given me any problems since then. One thing that I do recommend if you're going to do anything to the cooling system is just to go ahead and refresh the whole thing though. I went ahead and got an aluminum Mishimoto radiator as far as a Mishimoto electric fan, a different uh, thermostat in the housing right here, and new lines. It's just a good idea because it's one thing that's just known to go wrong. And especially if you drive your car hard, it's good to upgrade the cooling system so the car doesn't overheat. So with all three of those things that went wrong in the first year of ownership, I am in the car repairs a little under 300 bucks. And that's not bad if you ask me. None of those things were big problems, none of those things left me stranded, and none of them were a big deal. As far as the engine and everything else goes, it's all been rock solid, and I couldn't be happier with it. So, that has been my experience in the first year of owning this sweet E36 M3. As far as other cars that I've owned and things going wrong with them, it really hasn't been more expensive than those to own. And if you own something like a 328 or a 325, basically a non-M car, all the parts for that are gonna be much cheaper than the ones for the M3, so they'll cost you even less. With all that being said, are E36 is reliable? I would say yes. They make great track vehicles because the engines and transmissions, the drivetrain is just bulletproof. There have actually been two times where people have pulled over to talk to me about their E36 M3s, and both of them had over 280,000 miles on theirs on the original motor and transmission. Now that's saying something. They're great cars to have if you like to have a lot of fun, but you do need to understand that there are some little quirks that the vehicle has that if you own for a couple years, you're most likely gonna have to take care of. Hopefully me talking about these things has given you a little more of an insight of what it's like to own an E36 M3. With all of that being said and done, I would buy the car again. Compared to the other vehicles that I've owned, it hasn't really cost me any more in repairs than those have. Actually, this one's been the cheapest car I've had as far as repairs go. And if you're looking into it, check out those things that I've talked about, see if they need to get replaced. Maybe you can use those like I did as a bargaining point to be able to lower the price on the purchase of the vehicle. Get those things taken care of and it should be rock solid for miles and miles. If you're looking into getting one, I've had a ton of fun and I definitely recommend getting it. <laughs> I wanna thank you guys all for joining me on today's vlog about the E36s. So thanks for stopping in for yet another episode of Treats on the Streets. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and watching yet another video. I really appreciate all the support that you guys give me. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We have a lot of fun on the channel. And if you all enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Holy shit! 596? 583.